This is Mahesh Thapa from StarvingPhotographer.com and one of the co-founders of ProIG at Instagram. Today I want to show you one of the methods I use to combine multiple bracketed images to create a single high dynamic range image. The two programs we will be utilizing most are Photomatix Pro and Lightroom 4 which you see in front of you right now. Lightroom is where I house the raw images and make the final adjustments to my image. As you can see, there are five images here. This represents the zero compensation image. This is the minus two exposure compensation image, minus one, plus one, and plus two. I'm going to double click on them to give you a closer look at the detail. So again, this is the zero compensation minus two compensation, minus one compensation, plus one compensation, and plus two compensation. So we are going to export these five images to Photomatix Pro. To select all the images, I click on the first image and shift click on the last image. Then I right click or command click on any one of those images to bring up this menu system from which I select Export, Photomatix Pro. When you do that, this dialog box appears. In this dialog box, there are multiple choices that you can make. The one that I always select is this one right here that says Automatically Re-Import into Lightroom Library. That exports the finished HDR image from Photomatix Pro and sends it right into the original folder of Lightroom. That way you're not searching around on your hard drive to see where that image has been exported. One of the choices available is Align Images. I usually don't check that box because I almost always shoot all my landscape images on a tripod and with a cable release. So there really should be no misregistration or misalignment of the images. Another option available to you is Reduce Ghosting Artifact. Unless you have things moving in your field of view from exposure to exposure, you do not need to check that box. Another option available is reduce noise. If necessary, I like to control the noise through Lightroom itself, and I don't like using Photomatix Pro to do that, so I don't have that selected. Another option is reduce chromatic aberrations. Again, if there are chromatic aberrations apparent, I like to control it through Lightroom and not Photomatix Pro. The final option you see is show intermediary 32-bit HDR image. To tell you the truth, I don't really know what that means or what that does, but I've never had to use it and I'm not going to focus on it today. So in conclusion, the only selection I have checked off in this dialog box is this one that says automatically re-import into Lightroom library. If you want, you can check that box next to stack with first selected photo. It doesn't really matter to me. So I'm happy with the selection and I'm going to hit export. Soon the five images will be imported into Photomatix Pro and a combined HDR image will be available for manipulation. Here is the default output from Photomatix Pro. We could choose other options if we like. This is photographic. I don't like that very much. Natural. Not bad. Painterly. This is a little overdone, I think. Too much of that garish HDR look that I don't like very much. So you can try all the other options if you wish, but I liked the default output. The only thing I would change, perhaps, is the brightness of the sky. Let us examine the sky in a little bit more detail. If we click the rectangle box up here, we notice that the sky has a lot of noise in it. Wouldn't it be nice if we could get rid of that noise? In fact, I probably want to get rid of the entire brightness of the sky and replace it with that nice minus two exposure value image. That will give a nice color to the sky while still maintaining a brightness to the foreground and midground as you see over here. So how do we do that? Let me show you. Let me close this box. The trick is to use this option that says selection mode. Click that, and you're given another dialog box that you can click on to select what kind of method you'd like to use to make the selection. I keep it at the polygonal lasso, but you may like normal lasso or magnetic lasso better, 
but as I said, I like the default polygonal lasso. What do we do next? We select the sky in a very crude manner that is almost unbelievably easy. Let me show you. You click around the rough areas of where you think the sky is, and look how rough I am with the selection. And I'm not using some specialized tablet or specialized mouse. It's just the trackpad available to me on my computer. So let's close off that, that box by clicking on the origin. So this box is created very, very crude. The next step is to select this option that says Attach to Edges. When you do that, you notice that the selection snaps to the edges and the edge of the mountaintop and the tree lines. If you notice, there's also a 30 pixel cushion or feathering. Let us see what happens when we replace the sky with the minus two exposure value image. Right click inside the selection and select replace with photo at exposure value minus two. The sky immediately looks better. Uncheck the selection mode. The square appears again. We use the square tool to look at the transition between the sky and the tree line. So let's pick a spot here for example. The gradation between the sky and the tree is very very good. There are no bright or dark halos outside the tree line to indicate that there's any kind of blending going on. Let's look at another place. Again, very very good transition. There is some noise in the dark blue areas but I don't find it objectionable. If you do, you can take care of it later in Lightroom. So I think it looks very good. So at this point, we've got a beautiful appearing sky. We've got some great detail in the mid-ground barns and trees, and we have a very, very well-lit foreground. So I'm very happy with the way this has turned out. If you want, you can make other adjustments such as strength, color saturation, and luminosity but I am happy right now with this default image. I'm going to save and re-import. This will send it back to Lightroom where we can make further adjustments if we wish. As you notice, the final image has been exported back into Lightroom 4. Here it is. Let's double click on it. I'm going to show you a 100% view and very nice detail. We can even see some motion blur in the flock of birds in the sky. I don't think this looks unnatural and actually reflects the shutter speed that was used for this time of day. If you look at the transition zone between the sky and land, it is unnoticeable. It's a great blend and Photomatix did a wonderful job. Let's take a few moments to examine the foreground and see how Photomatix blended the flowers. If you notice, there's a wonderful backlit glow to them. Finally, if we want, we can make some minor adjustments. I am going to increase the micro contrast and vibrancy just a tad bit to my liking. To do that, I click on Develop. And on the right hand side, I use these two sliders. For clarity, I'm going to increase it to perhaps 25. That brings out a little bit of pop, a little bit of contrast to the image. Vibrancy is a way to increase saturation in colors that are not already saturated. Much better than using the saturation slider, I think. So I'm going to increase the vibrancy to about 20. So let me show you what this looks like before and after applying clarity and vibrance. This is before. You notice the image looks a little bit washed out, doesn't have that pop to it, and this is after. I think the colors look much richer and don't look overdone, and there's just that right amount of pop to it. As a last step, if you wish, we can crop this image to a square format to use on Instagram. There's a tool here click on that it automatically shows you the outside boundaries of your image we want to use a square format and we do that by selecting on this box instead of original I'm going to choose one by one 
and the square dimensions are already set for you. I'm going to crop this a little bit more because I don't like some of this dark area over here. I want the foreground to be lush with flowers, so I'm going to bring that box in to about so, so I can see the flowers much better in the foreground. And I'm going to move this crop box around until I'm happy with where everything is. So that, I think, to me looks pretty good. I hit the return button, and here is the final image. Thank you very much, and I hope you found this tutorial helpful.